Hello, Ashley. How are you? I'm fine, sir. How are you, sir? Yes. Blessing, how are you? I'm fine, sir. Really? Blessing, oh, okay, Sola. Is that, is that your name? Did I pronounce it well? Yes, okay, Sola. Okay, Sola. Okay, Sola. Okay. Okay. I don't know whether you guys can see my screen on um, adaptation. I can see it, sir. Okay. So today we're going to be very quick, but because we want to cover two topics, adaptation and nutrition. So uh, let's go at it. So when you talk about adaptation, you simply mean structural changes in the body of the organism that enable it to stay in the kind of environment that it finds itself. Like human beings, they have lung because they need to breathe in and breathe out. They have kidney because they need to be able to excrete their waste. So they have limbs, which are your hands, because they need to move. But let's say human beings are staying in the water, like the fishes, you know the kind of body parts that fishes have that will enable them to swim. So the, the morphology, the structure and behavior and function of the body parts of organisms are in relation to the environment where they find themselves in. And the ability of these structures to change, the change in structure and functions and behavior of an organism in order to adjust or survive in the environment that it finds itself is known as adaptation. Chick, am I clear on this? Yes, sir, you yeah. Okay. Uluashe, do you understand what I just explained about adaptation? Yes, sir. And Jam is going to ask you, which of the following is the change in structure, function, and behavior of an organism in order to adjust or survive in its environment? They will say, number one, survivor, number two, adaptation, number three, growth, number four, I mean, number C, number D, metabolism. So it's your duty to pick out adaptation because adaptation is the change in structure functions and behavior of an organism in order to adjust and survive in this environment. So our when we grow, as we are growing, our body is adjusting in such a way that we can uh, survive in the environment. If you're born in, uh, if you're in Africa, it's most likely that you're gonna have the, the uh, melanin that will help you adapt in the tropic area. So as you're growing as an organism, you're developing parts that will help you to stay in the environment that you find yourself in. So let's look at adaptation in vertebrates. And uh, you know that vertebrates are animals that have backbone. So the terrestrial animals, the ones that live on land. So what are those body parts that have adjusted in order to enable them to live freely in the place where they find as their habitat or community? So number one, position of thick, of skin and hair or fur, feathers as protective measures as well as temperature regulation. So your, this is your, the hair on your skin and your thick skin helps you to adjust in order for you to stay under the kind of temperature that you have. It helps for temperature regulation and protect your skin. If you don't have skin, anything that passes by will enter inside your body. So you can see that this skin is an adaptable structure that helps man to be protected. Number two, lungs for respiration. Like I said this before, our lungs, we use it to breathe in, breathe out. Our kidney is where the urine and everything is put in such a position to be taken out. The limbs, which is our hands and our legs, are things that help us to move, to make locomotive move, movement. The sweat gland is used for cooling and excretion. Okay, so those are some of the adaptations adaptive uh, structures that we have. Now, what are for the arboreals animal? So what are some of the uh, adaptive uh, structures? You have position of bright colors as well as camoufla camouflage for chameleon. So you can see that the ability of the chameleon to camouflage is actually an adaptation. Position of wings to fly, presence of hollow bones to make room for lightness. So you see, all these uh, birds that fly, their bones are hollow. There's nothing inside their bone. So this enables them to be light. They are light. That's why they can easily 
fly because their bones are hollow and light. They don't have big body mass like animal, uh, terrestrial animal that have to walk on the face of the earth. Then they fly because they, their body is adapted in such a way that it enables them to fly easily. And that is the importance of adaptation. So position of strong flight muscles and tendons. So they have the, 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 the body parts that they use for the flying, they have very strong muscle and tendons to so enable that. Position of powerful limbs, claws, Tails for climbing and piercing, e.g., birds, monkeys, and baboons. The Fs, whenever you hear the word Fs, Fs simply stands for the birds. So the Fs feed mostly on concentrated fruit grains in order to have enough energy to fly. You know, the birds fly, long distance fly. So they eat a lot of fruit grains. And position of streamlined body for easy flight. So the way their body is also, and uh, is, uh, the shape of their body is streamlined in order to help them to move faster. Now, so what are the adaptive structures of aquatic animals, animals that live in water? You remember, we've looked at two types of animals before now, terrestrial that walk on ground, arboreal that stay up, up trees and fly. Then now we're looking at aquatic, the so animals that live inside water, inside water. So number one is the position of streamlined body for movement. If you see your fish, you see the way your fish is so that it can easily swim. That's why anything you're building that you want to your submarines, they have to resemble fish so that they can move inside water. The, the war submarine and the nuclear submarine, nuclear, uh, submarines, you see they are built in such a way that they will look like fish so that they can move in water. So some have dark upper parts while their lower parts are lighter in order to blend with this sky camouflage when viewed from below. The position of slimy body for easy movement as well as protective measures. Position of gills, you know, gills, that's what the, animal, the fish is used for respiration or respiratory trumpets for respiration. Position of lateral lines to detect vibration and position of fins and webs for easy movement presence of suckers or heads for attachment. So those are the uh, most important um, adaptive uh, parts of the various animals that we've looked at. The root is an organ of a plant that typically lies below the surface of the soil. However, roots can also be area or erating that is growing up above the ground or especially above water. Furthermore, a stem normally occurs below ground. It's not exceptional either. Okay? Therefore, the root is best defined as non-leaf, non-node bearing parts of the plant. However, important internal structural differences between stems and roots. Okay? So the roots and the stems very, very important for plants in enabling them to stay and uh, pass nutrients from one part of the plant body to the other, okay? So with that, we get to nutrition immediately. So we just looked at important parts of adaptation. So let's look at nutrition. Who can tell me what nutrition is? Chika, can you help me with what nutrition is? Nutrition is... We have the basic nutrients of food we take in order to survive. Okay. Luase, can you help us with the definition of nutrition? Luase, are you there? Yes, sir. Okay. If you're already looking at my slide, you already see this definition. So take it. I'm trying to remember my definition. Okay. Um, nutrition can be defined as a process by which food is taken by living organisms in order to supply the nutrients required for continuous metabolic reactions going on in the body. Fantastic. That is what nutrition is. That's the exact definition of nutrition. The process by which living organisms take in nutrients. 
They take in food in order to supply the nutrients needed for body metabolism, needed for growth, needed for repair of one heart parts. That's what nutrition is. So whenever you take food in the morning or in the afternoon, you're doing what we call nutrition. That's why people take it as a course in the university to study it so that you get the right type of food. You get your carbohydrates for energy, your proton for repair of one ounce parts, your vitamins, your nutrients, all the different types of food that you need in order for you, your body to perform well. So taking in food in order to supply these nutrients is what we call nutrition. So living things feed or taking nutrients for survival. The mode of nutrition varies from one organism to the other, but it possesses features of adaptation that will enable it to feed. So when we talk about modes of nutrition, we simply say that mode of nutrition is the way that you get the food. So are you getting the food on your own? We call it autotrophic. If you're manufacturing the food by yourself, call it autotrophic. So that is what plants do. Plants manufacture their own food because they have what we call uh, chloroplast, chlorophyll. They have chlorophyll that enables the synthesis of food using photosynthesis through light. We we'll call them autotrophs. But once you cannot manufacture your own food by yourself, we we'll call those ones heterotrophs. So we're going to be looking at these two modes of nutrition. It's either you can do your own food by yourself, in which case you are known as autotrophs, or when you cannot do your own food by yourself, in that case, heterotrophs. Okay. So nutrition is the supply of food to the cells of of organisms in order that they can grow as well as repair and replace one out tissue. So that's what food help you to do. Food is what helps you. If you're not eating, you cannot be growing well. And when you have injuries, your injuries will not heal. So when we say replace or repair one out tissues or cell, it simply means that once your tissue or cell is having problem, maybe you have an injury, the food you are eating will help you to heal faster. Chica, are we clear on this? Yes, sir. Luasi, are you getting me? Yes, sir. Blessing, are you understanding this? Blessing. Stephen, are you understanding us? Yes, sir. Okay, so let's continue now. So the two modes of nutrition are autotrophic nutrition and heterotrophic nutrition. So autotrophic mode involves those organisms that can manufacture their own food from simple inorganic materials. Those organisms are normally green plants. Chica, what did I say? Which kind of organisms are always uh, classified under autotrophs? Green plants. Green plants, because they have the ability to use chloroph uh, the chlorophyll to synthesize their own food using sunlight. So they are known as autotrophs. So these autotrophs, they can be uh, using what we call chemosynthesis. In that case, these organisms ob obtain energy by oxidation of chemical substances. Examples of organisms that use chemosynthesis are the sulfur bacteria that oxidizes sulfur to tetraoses of a cis acid. Then we, look, we also have the nitrogen bacteria. The nitrosomonas oxidizes ammonia or its compound to diosonitrate. Then we have the ion bacteria that oxidizes ion from ion four, ion two to ion three. Then we have, after this chemo, this autotroph that undergo what we call chemosynthesis, we also have another type of autotrophs that do what we call holophytic nutrition. So this is carried out by all green plants through the process of photosynthesis. So if you are an autotroph, that means you produce your own food by yourself. So either you're doing it by chemosynthesis. In that case, you're obtaining your food by oxidation of chemical substances, or you're doing holophytism. In that case, you're using your green chlorophyll to uh, synthesize food using photo, uh, photosynthesis. So, Oluwase, tell me the two types of autotrophic nutrition that you know. 
chemosynthesis and holophytic nutrition. Good, chemosynthesis and holophytic nutrition. They are the two types of autotrophic nutrition. I would say that autotrophic uh, is when you manufacture the food by yourself. So if you are doing it by oxidation of chemical, it is called chemosynthesis. But if you are doing it from green plants, we call it holophytic nutrition. Okay, let's keep going. So now let's look at the next type of nutrition. We say there are two modes, either autotrophic or holophytic. Auto is when you're doing, but hetero is when you're feeding on other organisms that have used autotrophic to get the food. So heterotrophic nutrition, all animals like me, me and you, we don't manufacture our food by them, ourselves. We have to eat green plants. We have to eat another animal. You understand? So we are all classified under heterotrophic nutrition. So all animals, fungi, protozoa, and some bacteria depend directly or indirectly on the autotrophs for food. So we depend on plants. Plants manufacture their food by themselves. We, we cannot manufacture. So that's why we go and eat plants. We go and eat cassava. In order to get our nutrients, we eat cassava. We eat a goosey soup. We eat amala, all those things. They are from plants. Because we cannot use photosynthesis and get our own food. We go and eat them in order to get energy and food. So it's not only us animals. We also have fungi, protozoa, and some bacteria. We depend on autotrophs. We depend on plants to eat. So they are referred to as heterotrophs. Organisms concerned depend on already made food. Examples of heterotrophs are saprophytes. Saprophytes are things that feed on dead remains of plants and animals. So those organisms that feed on dead remains of plants and animals, they are known as saprophytes. Example is rhizopus, muco, fungi, bacteria, all these they feed on dead plants. And when they do it, they release extracellular enzymes. Now, the second group of heterotrophs are known as holozoids. And this is what the place where animals are classified. We don't feed on dead remains of plants and animals. The, the organisms that feed on dead remains, they are known as saprophytes. But we that eat complex food, Anything we can eat on anything. Human beings can eat plants, we can eat animals, we can eat cake. Some people even eat human beings. So holozoic, they eat complex organic food. And they are divided into herbivorous if they are feeding on plants. Carnivorous if they feed on flesh. Then omnivorous if they feed on both flesh and green plant. So a good example of omnivorous is human beings because we feed on both plants and animals. Carnivorous are those that feed on flesh alone. Example is dog, cat, lion. Lion can only feed on flesh, fresh ones. Then herbivores are those animals that feed on green plants, e.g. fish, goat, and cow. So we also have what we call predators. So predators are those organisms that feed on other smaller organisms. That, that is, they depend on other smaller organisms for food, and they call them prayers. It is hawk that feeds on small birds, or snake that feeds on rats. All these are known as predators. Those things they feed on, they are known as prayers. Okay. So there are also another group known as symbionts. So symbionts are two or more organisms that have beneficial association. Examples as in the fact that mode of feeding, e.g. legumes, noodles, and nitrifying bacteria, they have what we call symbiotic relationship. You give me, I give you, call it symbiosis. You give me, I give you. So that's what legumes and bacteria are doing. We also have the light chains, the fungus and archaea, and we have the sea animals and the hermit crab. So all these, they have what we call symbiotic relationship in terms of their feeding. This organism is feeding from this organism. This organism is also feeding from this organism. But we have another mode of nutrition called parasitism. We are organisms that live in. If the organism is living inside another organism, we call it endoparasitism. If it is living on top or outside the other organism, we call it ectoparasitism. So that organism that is living on either inside or outside of it is known as the host. 
And he's staying, that organism is staying on the host in order for it to get food and shelter. And sometimes, most times, it causes disease or harm to that organism. So when an organism parasite living in a host, eating from that host and staying there as a shelter, for still causing disease to that host, call it parasitism. So examples is the body louse, the bed bug, the flea, the tick, the aphids. All these are ectoparasites. Then we have the plasmodia, the guinea worm, hookworm that stays in your stomach, eating your food there and causing you to have stomach pain. It's a parasite. So they are known as endoparasites. You know I say, do you understand this parasite and symbiote? Yes, sir. So tell me, what kind of relationship will you have to want to have with your, your friend? Is this symbiote or parasitic kind of relationship? Which one is preferable? Symbiote. Yeah, symbiote has to be mutual, mutual, mutual respect, mutual love, mutual giving, symbiosis. Uh, if it is parasitism, only one, one person is enjoying, the other person is suffering, is strong. Okay. So specifically, we are going to be starting plant nutrition today, but we're not going to be finishing it. So we'll just look at it. We'll stop here and continue from next time. Okay. So plant nutrition, the non-green plants lack chlorophyll. Once a plant does not have green, that green pigment, you say that it does not have chlorophyll. So all such non-green plants, they have to feed parasitically or saprophytically in order to survive. But the ones that have green chlorophyll, they manufacture their food by themselves through photosynthesis. So the green plants synthesize carbohydrates in the presence of carbon dioxide, water, and chlorophyll, which traps the light, giving off oxygen as a byproduct. So this is called photosynthesis. So once somebody asks you what is photosynthesis, it's very clear. So the synthesis is the process by which green plants synthesizes carbohydrate in the presence of carbon four oxide, water, and chlorophyll, giving off oxygen. So you can see the uh, reaction here. It's simply synthesizing of this carbohydrate known as glucose from carbon four oxide and water in the presence of oxygen, giving in the presence of uh, sunlight, giving oxygen as byproduct. So energy is absorbed in the photosynthesis reaction. And any chemical process or any process whereby energy is absorb it. It's known as endothermic reaction. Then this uh, photosynthesis involves two major steps. We have the light phase and the dark phase. So today we'll just look at the light phase and uh, continue with the dark phase from tomorrow. So the light phase involves the chlorophyll, which is the green pigment trapping the light. That's why I call it light phase. It's related to light. So the green pigment on the leaf of those plants, it traps the light, the energy from the light. The light has energy. So the energy that it traps further splits the water into hydrogen and hydrogen ions, and what is known as photolysis. So Jambu asks you, which of the following process is the splitting of water into hydrogen and hydrogen ions? You should know that that process is known as photolysis. So it's among the first stages of the light phase in photosynthesis. So the hydrogen group is now reconverted to water and oxygen. Now, during the process, oxygen is liberated as a byproduct. At the same time, a compound coenzyme known as NADP is reduced by hydrogen ion to NADH, and ATP is formed. So ATP is a chemical means of storing energy. So that's how you get to store, so, uh, store energy. Then the overall reactor equation is now given as this. Okay. So Take note, this is the chemical formula for glucose, C6, H12, O6. So what is needed in this reaction is energy from the sun that is tapped through the chlorophyll and some enzymes in order to give this. So with that, we'll come to the end of this class. And I want to ask us now, how many people visited our website today? Yes, I did. Okay, did you see new courses? Can you tell me the new courses that you saw? I saw chemistry, wire and jam. That is the one for experts. Okay. Okay. 
you, are you guys seeing my screen now? Yes, sir. Which, what, what slide are you seeing? Chemistry. Huh? That's chemistry. I see. Okay, yeah. So, so these are the courses we added. Uh, government, I see mathematics, the courses, chemistry. mathematics, chemistry. Okay. Yeah. So we added mathematics, chemistry today. So you have to go check them out. Very interesting. So, like I said, we are adding up every day. By the first of next month, all our lectures, our Zoom class like this, we'll be taking the classes from these very lectures. So that's why we are making them. You must have registered as a student from there. That's how we will be taking our further classes from. So we'll just open up a classroom, then we'll log in. And as we are teaching you immediately, you're completing the quizzes. And I, like I said, the quizzes are former past questions. So we've used them to create these quizzes Everything we are telling you is so let's say now you open this mathematics now. The, the same note that I'm using for, for your for these slides that I'm making in these classes, we've already so this same mathematics. I just opened mathematics now. So once you scroll down, you see all the courses, fraction, simple interest, indices, log reading, sort, set theory, Venn diagram, algebra. So all the things you need in order for you to make A1 in your mass is already there. So you click on this. Uh, enroll for class, that's what you have here. Or continue your class if you've done it before. So once you click on it, it opens up, you can now see the class. So the class is both in video format and in text space. So you can play the video and start listening to the class. It's similar to what I'm teaching you. It's actually in a class. You can see number base. So see the explanations of the number base, they are here. So once you are done, you can do your quiz. If you have any question you want to ask me, you can see quiz on the past question. You click here, you start answering the quiz. For those of us that didn't see this quiz, if you have any question, you see this place, the road, browse Q&A, you put your question there. Our teachers are responsible for the various courses will go and answer your question. So very soon, that's also where you'll be submitting those your class assignments and everything. You'll be submitting it here. That's why every day after teaching, I take you through this. Because further studies from first of next month will be on this website. So learn how to use it. If you want to chat with us, you can you see this WhatsApp link here. You click, you start chatting immediately or chatting with me, whether it's on your laptop or your phone. Once you click here now, as you're typing, I'm seeing your chat. So if you have any question, I can easily answer you. So you can see all the topics in mathematics, fraction, simple interest, indices. We've treated all of them, even in video format. So let's say now you want the video format, you click on this video now, it will start playing. So you get the same explanation that I give you. Very, very good explanation. This is under conversion of base number. You see, this is a typical class environment. Jika, did you understand the, the what I'm explaining now? Yes, I understand it. Okay. So you use this platform. All the all the courses that are in your jam curriculum, your jam uh, syllabus, we've been treating them one by one. So all of them are here. Once you finish anyone, you do the quiz. You will see the quiz there. You answer it. Can you see a quiz from past question? You click on it. Once you do the quiz. I will see your score. So once I tell you to do a quiz, I don't need to be with you there. I will see your score as you're answering as a student. I'm already seeing it from here, from the back end. So those are what you are going to do. Like I told you guys, you're supposed to score, you're supposed to score uh, 9A1 in your wire. That's what you're supposed to score, 9A1 in your wire. You're jam 300 and above. So the only way you can make this call is by making sure that you're watching all these videos, doing all the quizzes, and asking questions. Once you have questions, this browse Q&A, you tap there, you type in your question. Once you type, you submit to me. You can see here, ask questions. If you want to ask questions about base number, you simply come here, type base number. 
So once you type your base number, you come here, you tell, you tell us the problem. You can say convert, then you state uh, 876 base 7 to a number in base 8. So you can ask this, once you ask this, you can submit the question. So once you submit the question, we'll see it here. Our teachers will work on it and give you the answer. So that is how you're gonna be working. You see all of them conversion. If you click on fraction, this fraction now, if you click on the fraction video now, you'll see now, it will open now, okay? So you can see the fraction video is open. See all those notes I gave you that the, if you remember last week, okay, is it yesterday that we did mass? We said that a fraction is a part of a whole denominator. Can you remember this Oluwase in our mass class yesterday? Okay. So, before yesterday. Okay, day before yesterday, okay. So in our mass class, this is what we did. You see that it's the same note that I'm giving you, the same thing I'm teaching you. I did board mass. You can see the board mass. We did decimals. We did approximation. Is this what we did? I think it's yesterday. Chica, when did you do mass? Okay. So you see. So these are all the things we did. Yeah. Chica, are you talking to me? So what did you say? Now I was asking you when we did mass. Was it yesterday? So you can see how they explain fraction three over four. Oh,
I don't know how much storage. 